Good morning everyone, hope you're all having a wonderful day today. Today we're going to be talking about my Mark III upper receivers. But before we get into the video, I do want to say that this entire video is basically an ad because these are my upper receivers and I do sell these and I do make a little bit of money off of them. So there isn't going to be any sort of ads or anything else in the video for you guys since the entire video is basically an ad. So for those of you who don't know, my Mark series of upper receivers is basically a series of different length upper receivers. The number generally will indicate what length the barrel is. So the Mark 1 was at 11.5, the Mark 2 was 16 inch, and the Mark 3 that you see right here is a 14 and a half inch pin and weld upper receiver. Now, what I try and do with these upper receivers is give you guys a custom shop level of build quality and assembly with production prices. So I try and find the best parts for the best possible price to keep the price as low as possible. And with these, you're getting a 14 and a half inch pin and weld upper receiver complete with everything that you need for $400 shipped, which is a pretty good value. And I don't think you can get another pin and weld upper receiver for that low of a cost. Now, unfortunately, if you hop over to my website, which is Focus Shooting LA, LLC.com, you'll notice that basically every single Mark III upper receiver is out of stock. There were a couple different versions of it. I have a 13 and a half inch M lock rail and a 13 inch quad rail. We'll go through the specifics in just a minute, but basically they're all out of stock. However, this video will still serve for future reference as I should have all of the Mark series. Eventually my goal is to have them all in stock at the same time instead of doing one run at a time, but we're trying to build up inventory and so on. So now with all of that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into the specifics on the Mark III upper receiver. So starting off with half of the heart and soul of the Mark III is going to be the barrel. Now these are 14 and a half inch barrels from Ballistic Advantage. For those of you who don't know, I'm a distributor or dealer for Ballistic Advantage. They've been an excellent partner and I have got exceptional pricing on their barrels, uh, which is why I'm able to give you guys these bar these upper receivers at such a low cost. They've been a great partner and they make great barrels. So 14 and a half inches long, a true 556 chamber. This is a black nitride with a very, very nice black nitride finish in the barrel extension and the chamber as well. The finish looks exceptional. All of the machining is done really, really well. On top of that, we have a mid-length gas system with a 0 0.078 gas port size. Now a 16 inch mid-length is a 0 0.076, but because you lose an inch and a half of barrel, an inch and a half of dwell time, you need to make that gas port just a little bit larger to still have the same pressure for a long enough period of time to properly cycle the action. So 0 0.078 is very, very soft shooting. These are incredibly soft shooting upper receivers. There was nothing trick going on with the lower receiver other than an upgraded trigger. We are using a carbine buffer and a carbine spring in here, so there's no special recoil mitigation going on in here, no adjustable gas blocks, nothing like that. Now, 14 and a half inches is, of course, not a legal rifle length uh, due to silly arbitrary gun laws. So to get to the 16 inch minimum, what we have is a pinned and weld four prong flash hider. This is from Strike Industries. It's their Strike industry streets venom their 556 flash hider it does an exceptional job of hiding flash however you will notice that it does have that tuning fork sound which is pretty standard with all three or four prong flash hiders if you're used to that sort of thing this isn't going to be a surprise if you hate that sort of thing then this is probably something that you're going to want to pass on because it does have that fairly annoying tuning fork sound every time you pull the trigger or bump it against a hard object now so that is basically the barrel. So you have a 14 and a half inch 556 barrel, but you have a pinned and welded flash hider. So these are flux welded in place. So basically what's really nice about the Strike Industries Venom flash hiders is they come pre-drilled for pin and weld, which is awesome. So basically, uh, there is a steel dowel inserted on top of drilling out into the threads just a little bit on the barrel. Then the steel dowel gets inserted, fits right into that little dimple that you do on the threads. And then it gets welded on top and it is now permanently attached and legally 16 inches long or 16.1. I haven't actually measured out the proper length of it, but it is 16 plus inches long, making it a legal rifle length barrel. Now, just to touch on the gas block and gas tube quickly, it is a radical gas block, which I believe is 4140 steel. So it's almost as strong as the barrel itself. It's a very high quality, very simple 0.750 gas block. It is a double set screw design, which is perfectly fine, very adequate for 5.56 non-piston driven systems. And then of course we have a stainless steel mid-length gas tube, nothing special there. Now the second part of the heart and soul of any upper receiver is going to be the bolt carrier group. Because basically 
the barrel and the bolt carrier group do all of the work while everything else just kind of sits there and waits for them to do their job. Now, what we went with on the Mark III, this is a little bit of a departure from what we've done in the past with AO Precision and Toolcraft. This is actually a Faxon Firearms or Faxon Firearms uh, 556. This is their super finished nitride mil spec plus bcg so we have some very basic specifics on it it is an 86 20 carrier 93 10 bolt which is like seven percent stronger than carpenter 158 if everything is done properly so it is a little bit better than mil spec in that regard on top of that they actually chamfer the rear of the bolt lugs by about 45 degrees giving them a much smoother lock and unlock on top of that we have a grade 8 fasteners on our gas key with a permatex seal in there uh, staked to mill spec the staking on them is quite good have not had any issues and again the nice thing about these is when i get 20 or 30 at a time i can go in and check every single one and make sure that they're all identical and these are all perfectly identical for all intents and purposes now the gas key or sorry the carrier to bolt fit is very very tight and that will take some getting used to as these tend to be a little bit tighter right off the bat and then they'll kind of loosen up and get a little bit smoother as time goes on because that tolerance is very very tight there's no wobble whatsoever now when they say super finished nitride what they mean is just that it has an incredibly i believe it's high or low surface finish whatever that number means the ra number but anyways the surface finish on it is done to an exceptionally high degree. I believe it is polished nitrided and then polished again on top of that. So it is a very, very slick, very lubricious finish. Nitriding is a very, very good finish for bolt carrier groups. Uh, the chrome lining on the carrier and gas key is a little bit better in certain circumstances, but uh, nitriding is a lot harder to mess up and it's of course a lot less expensive as well so a very very nice nitrided bolt carrier basically mil spec in profile nothing really special going on except for the chamfered bolt lugs themselves but other than that it's an exceptionally high quality bolt carrier very very good finish the machining on it is perfect grade 8 fasteners on the gas key exactly what you want to see on a very very good uh, mil spec bolt carrier now one thing that I do want to say about the extractors on these is they are o-ring enhanced with the Viton o-ring I want to say so I took all of these apart because I check every single bolt carrier that I get from the factory just to make sure that they're up to spec so every single one of these has not only an o-ring but also the rubber dowel insert as well so basically you have a rubber insert the spring of course and then the uh, Viton o-ring which means that you have an exceptional amount of extraction force so the extraction force is great the ejector springs very 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 tough and everything else on the bolt is done to a very very high degree and overall it is just a very exceptional bolt carrier generally they retail for about $150 however I was able to get them again at a distributor price for an exceptional value which is why I included them here on the mark 3 now the thing that most of you will be noticing right now is that there is a very chunky quad rail on here now it's actually not that chunky and to be clear this 13 inch quad rail is only two ounces heavier than the 13 and a half inch m lock which we'll talk about in just a minute now this 13 inch quad rail is actually from utg pro it is actually they're made in the usa line anything that's utg pro is made in the usa and it actually impressed me to an insane degree when i first got these so these weigh i believe 13 13.5 ounces or so so they're not very heavy they're under a pound for a 13 inch quad row which is quite nice they have scalloping on all four sides as well as all four sides are t marked t marked l marked uh r marked and b marked of course for the four different sides on your quad rail which is quite nice all of the Picatinny rails are scalloped out. There's lots of ventilation everywhere on here. On top of that, you have built-in QD cups that work excellently. I believe you have four of them. So you have one, two, three, and four on either side. So if you're left or right-handed, you're gonna have those uh, QD cups for your uh, QD sling swivels, that sort of thing that fit right in there just fine.
That's what I get for not paying attention. Now, as far as the rails themselves go, they are incredibly strong, very, very robust, very tanky. The one downside to them, I would say, is the internal diameter is only like 1.15 inches, 1.25 inches, something else like that. So if you were wanting to put like a shorter barrel and then a suppressor for like a really clean look, unless you have like a micro can, it's really not gonna fit under this rail because that opening, to shave weight and make it a little bit slimmer is of course quite a bit smaller just because they don't want to add in a lot of extra material because when you make a quad rail uh, weight is generally going to be one of the biggest downsides however again on this you're only sacrificing two ounces between this and the M-Lock version. And I really like the looks of quad rail and they're very, very, very strong. So now let's go ahead and talk about their attachment methodology on here because it actually is quite good in my opinion. So basically you have a barrel nut that gets torqued down to 50 foot pounds of torque. Now I sequentially torque down my barrel nuts uh, from 25 to 35 to 50. So I torque down to 25, break, 35 break 50 and that's where it stays on top of that the threads are seasoned with a permatex anti-seize solution so that if later on in life if you want to change out the barrel or i have to rebarrel it for you because the first rebarrel on these upper receivers is free that's going to be standard with all of my mark series of upper receivers no matter how many i do uh, the first three barrel is always going to be free on all of them. So if you or I ever have to do any work on them in the future, that will be easy to do because that Permatex anti-seize solution will cause the dissimilar materials from uh, locking together basically. Now, the barrel nut is then torqued down. Gas tube actually fits inside of the, uh, on this one here, inside of the barrel nut. So the barrel nut does need to be timed a limit, little bit. So if I have to go a little bit over 50 foot pounds, that's what I do because you can go up to 80 on these guys. Now. How this works is you have two steel dowels that are attached to the rail itself. They index into the barrel nut, locking the handguard from rotating off the barrel nut. And then on top of that, you have four set screws that then tighten down two on either side that tighten the handguard into the barrel nut itself. Now on top of that, as another anti-rotation uh, measure you have two anti-rotation tabs that are adjustable on either side of the handguard now what that means is that you could take this handguard and you could put it on a billet upper receiver or a thicker style upper receiver and you could still utilize the anti-rotation tabs on different billet sized upper receivers if they have a different face of the receiver sometimes those anti-rotation tabs will not slip over you have to cut them down like i did on the mark ii series but because these are adjustable you don't need to do that. So basically you have four steel bolts that are tightening the handguard against the barrel nut itself, as well as two steel dowels that lock it from rotating in regards to the barrel nut. And now in regards to the upper receiver, you have two large aluminum anti-rotation tabs as well. So there is a lot going in here and they are a little bit more tricky to install, but once they are installed, you get a incredibly secure lockup with one of the strongest rails you can buy because these are gonna be even if you're like, oh, I like my Geisley rails and whatever, like the one behind me, this is still going to be much, much stronger than that just by virtue of the design of quad rails and the extra material that needs to go into them. So personally, I love the quad rails. I love the function. I love the way they look. I like the way that this one here indexes with the upper receiver to be a very, very strong, very secure lockup. And again, it only costs me two ounces. Now, to go over the other model, even though again, they're all sold out, so you can't buy either of these. This is actually a Mark II upper receiver that I'm working on currently. Uh, this one here has the 13 and a half inch M-Lock version. Now this again only saves you two ounces, so I think it's like 13.6 down to 11.6 or something like that. I'll post that in the description for you guys. You get a 13 and a half inch true seven-sided M-Lock, so you get M-Lock on all seven sides all the way down. On top of that, you have scalloped and removed material from the top as well as extra ventilation and built-in anti-rotation tabs. Now on the Mark II upper receivers, you don't have the anti-rotation tabs because again, you have this billet upper receiver that is slick slided without a forward assist. So the anti-rotation tabs actually have to be ground down on the Mark IIs because again, they're not gonna fit over the thicker billet style of upper receiver. Not gonna be true with all billet upper receivers, but just with the ones that are on the Mark II. But if you do order a Mark III upper receiver in the future with a 13 and a half inch quad rail, they will of course have the anti-rotation tabs built in that slip over the upper receiver. They have a very, very tight tolerance. There's still like maybe a half degree of play uh, left or right between them, but that's just to make up for different size receivers because there is gonna be some variation in receiver sizes as well. Now on top of that, you have the anti-rotation tabs 
seven and a half sides, seven sided M lock, nicely scalloped out and skeletonized upper uh, Picatinny section as well as good ventilation. And then you have two steel cross bolts uh, that clamp on to the barrel nut itself. These are torqued down to 35 inch pounds sequentially. So you torque back and forth and back and forth until they're both actually at 35 inch pounds. And that's what you have to do when you do a clamp system because when you tight, tighten down one, then tighten down the other, then the other one loosens. So you have to go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth until they're both actually at 35 inch pounds. So that is the M lock version of the handguard, though again, they're all sold out. Now that is basically it for the interesting part of the upper receiver group. So what we have on here for the actual upper receiver itself is we have a, I believe this is an Anderson with a Cerro forging. So it's a very, very high quality 7075 T6 aluminum, hard code anodized upper receiver, mil spec, M4 feed ramps, all good there, nothing special whatsoever. Uh, on top of that, we have a very standard 7075 mil spec charging handle, Ford assist and dust cover uh, courtesy of CAC. And that is about it for the upper receiver. Now, uh, talking about a little bit about the setup and the testing that I did on this specific upper receiver, because this is my test upper, which also sold. So I have to actually get this out for the customer that bought it. Uh, but I do generally sell the test upper receivers for a fairly steep discount, just because people like to have them, even though they have higher round counts and more wear and tear, as you will see in the uh, intro of this video. Now, this upper receiver currently has about a thousand rounds through it. I generally, when, when I do any of my marks, series of upper receivers, I generally take one or two and take them out to the range quite a bit more than the other ones. Every upper receiver gets tested before it gets shipped out and you get your own sheet that says exactly what the upper does and exactly what I recommend in terms of buffers and springs if there's any special recommendations. On all of the Mark III's because they are so soft shooting, I recommend a carbine buffer and carbine spring. Now you might run into a circumstance with your ammo and your lower receiver, you might need something different, but for most people, what I'm gonna recommend is a very simple carbine buffer, carbine spring, because these are very, very soft shooting upper receivers. Now, a couple other little odds and ends to wrap up before we get done with the video. Uh, all of the barrels are backed up by Ballistic Advantages one MOA guarantee. You can read about that on their website, but I will also back up their guarantee as well. Now, all of these upper receivers with match quality ammunition, high quality ammunition should be able to get you one MOA accuracy as long as you are doing your part. For these, I didn't do any specific accuracy testing. I did some zeroing with some M193 at 100 yards. I was able to get five shots in an inch and a half, which is a very, very good group for M193. And I was also able to take that M193 out to 500 yards in a high wind scenario. Fourteen and a half inch barrels. Uh, they're really hot. 14.5s, 13.7, 13.9, 125, 12, 7, all the really silly odd barrel lengths that you like. But 14.5 pin and weld is a very, very cool barrel length. It's one of the most efficient barrel lengths around to get you an upper that's not too long while still giving you very, very, very good ballistic performance. And you can again use it for just about anything with that 16 inch-ish overall length on the barrel. Now, something that I did forget to mention earlier on, although all of this information is going to be listed out in detail on the website underneath every single upper receiver, because I go into pretty great detail about how everything is assembled. The gas block screws are also torqued down to 25 inch pounds, and they also have um, red thread locker from Permatex. It's number 272. So it's a high temperature thread locker. So it basically is a semi-permanent uh, lasts up to 450 degrees. Now you can still get your barrels up to 500 degrees or more, but it does take quite a bit of shooting to do that in most circumstances. So that Permatex red thread locker is just an extra layer of security on your gas block, though again, these should not be going anywhere whatsoever. Now, right before we end the video, I do want to talk about the warranty. And again, all this information is on the website if you want to read it in a text form versus me babbling what I remember off the top of my head. Now, the warranty 
is a lifetime warranty. There's not really uh, any conditions to it whatsoever. Uh, you can transfer it so if somebody else, you sell it to somebody else and they have issues with it, they can contact me. Basically, the warranty is for any parts breakages, premature wear, anything else like that. The first rebarrel is free, so if you legit shoot one of these barrels out, 10, 20, 30,000 rounds of 5.56, and you can no longer hold a decent group, I will absolutely rebarrel re that for you for free. So you'll get a new barrel. You can even switch barrel lengths on me. I don't really care. I'll do what you want. Um, but on top of that, all of the parts are warranted for everything. So it's not going to cost you anything if you have something break on you. Like let's say you have an extractor break in 500 rounds. I'm definitely going to send you a new extractor because that should not be happening. Um, anything else that goes wrong with it, just let me know. Like I said, everything is covered by a lifetime warranty uh, done by yours truly. And the reason that I do that is because when I buy stuff, that's what I like to see. I like to see basically unconditional lifetime warranties. So that is what you guys are getting when you purchase one of my Mark series of upper receivers. So that is about it for the video guys thank you so much for watching i hope you all enjoyed let me know if you guys have any questions comments or concerns down in the description down below let me know what i should do next for the mark series i believe i'm going to round out the mark series with a mark 4 uh, which is going to be an 18 and a half inch 556 and then a mark 5 which is a 12 and a half inch 556 and i believe that will be it for the mark series and then after that i will work on just trying to keep everything in stock so that people can purchase what they want when they want instead of having to wait for me to get a new run of them in for sale. So that is about it for the video, guys. I hope you all enjoyed. I will talk to you guys in the next one. Peace out.